A few of you in recent videos have asked why I have a tattoo of Truth from Full Metal Alchemist on my arm. Well, that all comes down to Truth being, to me, one of the most interesting and resonating characters in all of anime. The messages and meaning behind his character are essentially my life motto, and while he's only in a few episodes, those episodes always seem to stand out as being the most memorable in the series. Well, aside from the ones about everyone's favorite dog girl. However, to fully understand the importance and the meaning behind Truth, I should probably lay some groundwork. Full Metal Alchemist takes place in the country of Amestris, which is largely inspired by pre-World War II Europe. In this world, people known as alchemists can manipulate the matter around them and reshape it into whatever they want. However, there are two rules to alchemy that all alchemists must abide by. The first is the Law of Equivalent Exchange, and as the show will tell you seemingly hundreds of times, for a transmutation to take place, the same amount and type of matter must be broken down to be reassembled. So you can't take a piece of steel and turn it into a block of wood, but you could turn it into a spear. The second law is a taboo for all alchemists, and that is that an alchemist should never perform human transmutation, which is essentially alchemy targeted at human life. This is because alchemy is manipulating the world around you, and manipulating human life would be playing God. The main characters of the show, being Edward and Alphonse Elric, quickly learn that God isn't really a big fan of impersonators, as when their mother dies, they try to bring her back to life, and they're put face to face with God. We only really see Edward's interaction in this, as Alphonse has no memory of it, but in Ed's case, he's brought to a seemingly endless void of white, with a large gate behind him, and an ethereal white being in front of him. This is the domain of truth. When Ed asks the being who he is, the being replies, I'm the world. I'm the universe. I'm God. I am truth. I am all. I am one. And I am also you. He explains that Ed has knocked on the door and must go through it. This is the gate of truth, and beyond it is the Eye of God. While seeming to be a vast darkness filled with eyes, any who are pulled into it get to see and learn everything there is to know about the truth, possibilities, and limits of alchemy. And this leads to Ed believing that all of the problems in the world can be solved through alchemy, and if they couldn't, then there's simply something missing from the equation. To this point, while being completely creeped out by Truth, we also have the idea in our heads that Truth is simply a gatekeeper of wisdom, and that he's trying to bestow Edward with the information that he wanted. However, when Ed comes out of the gate, we see Truth for what he really is, the embodiment of the Law of Equivalent Exchange, and a deterrent for those who would play God. For performing human transmutation and gazing upon the Truth, Edward must pay the toll. The price for this knowledge, and the punishment for overstepping his role as a human, was for Truth to take what mattered most to Ed. And since Edward was trying to bring his mother back from the dead, and was convinced that he could ignore the laws of nature, Truth took Edward's leg from him. A reminder that no matter how much he learned, he should never step up to act like a god. His brother Alphonse was also put in front of the gate. However, what Al wanted most was to feel the warm embrace of his mother again. And as a result, Truth stole his body from him, so he could never feel anything again. When Ed sees his brother's body being taken, he pleads with Truth to at least leave his soul behind, offering up anything for the god to take in exchange. Truth obliges, and the cost for his right-hand man's soul was Ed's right arm. While all these seem pretty cheesy, Truth always takes from those who are playing god in a metaphoric and cruel way. Humans who would dare to play god must pay a steep price for their arrogance. That is Truth. And more importantly, beyond that, it opened up a whole slew of jokes for the community about giving an arm and a leg for your goals. But of course, Ed and Al were not the only alchemists to break this taboo. Although by force, Colonel Mustang also opened the gate. The man who always looked to create a shining new age for a mistress had his eyesight taken from him as a result. Truth ensured that no matter what good the Colonel put into the world, he would never be able to see the country that he helped to create. We also saw the Elric's teacher, Izumi, come face to face with Truth. She had tried to bring her stillborn child back to life, and as a result, Truth took her reproductive organs from her so that she could never give birth again. Truth, in all of these cases, is a reminder for those who step into the domain of God that they are human, and they should exist in the world around them as it is. There's a Latin proverb which I think is pretty fitting for Truth, which is Vivere universum vivus vici, which means, by the power of truth, I, while living, have conquered the universe. Truth is a guardian who is constantly reminding alchemists that, despite their amazing and fantastical abilities, they are not conquerors of the universe. They are merely part of it. And when you really think about the lines that he says, I'm the world. I'm the universe. 
I am God. I am true. I am all. I am one. And I am also you. It kind of comes together. Especially when you consider that one of the major tenets and lessons in alchemy is one is all, all is one. And while being trained by Izumi, Ed and Al come to understand this to mean that all life and matter in the universe is connected through the cycle of life and death. As such, alchemy, and its manifestation in truth, are a connecting force which allows all things to flow into one another. It is the understanding of the universe and all things in it. And that's why interrupting this cycle and forcing new life into something that should have already proceeded onto the next stage is such a taboo. You're basically adding a loop into the stream of the universe. However, I think that the most important and least looked at piece of the truth puzzle is his specific interaction with those who enter his domain when contrasted against one another. Truth will always appear as whoever has entered his domain. Where he differs is in the tone, choice of words, and intention of his discussions with those who play God. For example, when he meets Edward, he has a full discussion about how Ed is trying to understand alchemy and go beyond the laws of nature. However, when he meets Mustang, who was forced to open the gate, he's instead silent. He doesn't have any lesson to teach Mustang, as he's content living in the natural world and not imbalancing the natural order. And of course, we can also compare Ed's encounter with fathers. They each ask the being who he is, and in each case, they receive nearly the same speech with small differences. There's a small and barely noticeable shift in the words that Truth chooses while describing himself, and there's a major shift in the ending of each speech. When he talks to Ed, he's talking in a matter-of-fact way, saying things like, I'm the world. I'm the universe. I'm God. But when he talks to Father, he says, Who am I? One name you might have for me is the world. Or you might call me the universe. Or perhaps God. Or perhaps the truth. There's this pretty interesting distinction here, and it comes down to his intent. When he's talking to Ed, he is trying to teach him a lesson about the value of being human. Because of that, we see him calling himself a god, a method of humbling the young alchemist. But with Father, he's using wishy-washy language about himself. He doesn't really say that he's a god, but it is what people call him. He doesn't need to appear as a god to Father, because Father has shown he has no respect for the title or for the boundary between mortals and gods. He's already tried to become a god himself, so Truth sees him instead as someone who's just strayed too far, and can no longer be helped. You stole your power from others. You rejected your human origins, and chose to covet the power of what you call god. And that's also why we see the shift in how Truth's speeches end. With Edward, he says, And I am also you, and you have dared to knock on the door, and now it is opened. This is what you wanted. I will show you the truth. This is almost a welcoming tone, while it is admittedly pretty creepy. When he's saying, I am also you, he's saying that God, the universe, the world, and all people are connected. You shouldn't intervene with the cycle of life and death because all life and all souls are connected beyond death. But when he talks to Father, he shifts and says, And of course, this also means that I am you. I am the truth of your despair the inescapable price of your boastfulness, and now I will bestow upon you the despair you deserve. Even the start of this difference, being, and of course I am you, has this tone that makes it feel like Truth is looking down on Father. He isn't trying to comfort him, he's instead belittling him for not realizing that the goal he was reaching for was already a part of him. He blindly sought after something that was already at the core of his being to begin with, and in doing so he cast away what he really wanted his humanity, and by connection his tie to being part of God and the universe. While Truth punishes all those who enter the gate, there seems to be a form of understanding in his cruelness. Ed was a child who was looking for a way to get back one of his loved ones. As a result, Truth tried to teach him something. However, Father was someone who was cast away his humanity, or whatever his equivalent is, to become God. There was no pure intention, there was just selfishness and ego. As such, he's cast away beyond the gate because there's no lesson that could be taught. He's beyond help. I believe that the world of Full Metal Alchemist does have a god, but not in the traditional sense. There's no invisible man in the cloud with a beard who created life. Instead, god in the world of FMA is the universe in its entirety, and truth is simply a keeper of balance and order. He is the gatekeeper, guiding or punishing those who have lost their way and maintaining the order of the universe. He is the embodiment of alchemy. 
the practice that lets humans reach beyond their limits and manipulate the physical world around them, only ever intervening when alchemists try to manipulate the world of the dead. Truth isn't a god, and he ensures that no human ever will be either by forcing his own sense of teaching and justice upon those who would break that cycle of life and death. And when someone fully learns the lesson that Truth is putting forth, he's overjoyed. When Ed returns for Al's body, he offers his ability to perform alchemy in exchange. Truth then asks Ed if he's sure that he's alright being lowered to a simple human, and Ed replies that that's all he's ever been, and if any problem arises, he'll just work with his friends to overcome it. To this, Truth exclaims, You've done it. That's the right answer. Good job, you beat me. Truth then fades away as Ed loses his ability to perform alchemy. When Edward acknowledges the folly in his belief that alchemy could solve all the problems in the world, and he humbled himself to the idea that accepting the world as it is, and that working through the world with natural means was the basis of what being human is, Truth concedes to him, as Ed has learned the lesson which he had been trying to put forward. Truth's goal for Ed was to help him understand that there's nothing wrong with being a human, and that there's no shortcut or easy way out of problems and discomfort in life. Everything comes down to equivalent exchange. If you put in enough effort and enough dedication, then any problem can be conquered, and you can get through any hardship. Truth understands how difficult what Ed is going through is, and how painful it was for him to have lost someone. However, it's better for you to do all you can to move forward and not dwell on the past, while trying to change things that have already happened. For many people, myself included, there are moments in the past or parts of your life that you would give an arm and a leg to go back and change. And for me, truth is a reminder that sometimes life is awful. Sometimes you're going to wish that you could just clap your hands together and have the solution for every problem right in front of you. But that's not how the world works. And if you want to see a positive change in your life, you need to actually put the effort in and work towards it. After all, everything comes back to equivalent exchange.